Hi everybody, my name is Danny. I am the social studies educator here at Children's Museum Houston, and I am coming to you live from our Kidtropolis exhibit. So for those of you who have been here to visit us before, you know that Kidtropolis is our kid city. It's for kids, it, it's run by kids, but all of our kids are at home right now, so that's why we are bringing Kidtropolis to you. So in Kidtropolis, one of the ways that we really like to learn and to explore is through the use of something called role play. And role play is basically just playing pretend. It's using your imagination to imagine how you might be if you were a particular character. And the great thing about that is you can do that absolutely anywhere. So we are actually going to be asking you to do a little bit of role play here today. And we're going to be role playing by our vet clinic, which is sponsored by our awesome friends over at Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. We are thinking of you guys right now. And we are really excited because here in our vet clinic, we have all sorts of different animal patients. And then we are gonna have us role play as veterinarians. And a veterinarian's job is to take care of those animal patients to see if there are any problems and to make sure that they are as healthy as they can be. Now, of course, I need to say right now, I am not a veterinarian, not in real life. And I imagine since I'm talking to my kid friends at home, none of y'all are veterinarians either, at least not yet. So we are not going to be role playing with any real life animals at home today, all right? So if you have a pet at home, that is awesome. We're not gonna use your pet for our role play. Instead, I'm gonna ask you to find a stuffed animal that can be your patient. So you may have a stuffed animal dog at home, or you might have a stuffed animal cat. Maybe you want to use a smaller animal like a stuffed animal rabbit or maybe you have something like a fish or a reptile or something. I've got my little friend Daisy the iguana down here. Um, and of course as our friends at Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo know we also have a lot of big animals like farm animals that need veterinary care too. So for example cows and pigs and horses, sheep, all of those animals need veterinary care and medicine as well just like like our pets that we have at home. So if you wanna get a stuffed animal horse, that would be awesome for our time together today. So I'm gonna give you all a brief moment. Go get your stuffed animal patient and come right back. All right, everybody, I have my pet patient right here, this little dog here, and I think our dog probably needs a name. Um, Henry, do you have a dog at home? Oh, yes I do. Uh, what's your dog's name? Um, Wally. Wally, that's a great name. Do you mind if I name our patient Wally today? Uh, how about Wally 2? Wally 2, <laughs> that's perfect. Yes, we do not want to take away from the original. So this will be Wally 2. Hi, Wally 2. How are you today? Wally 2, can you speak? Speak, Wally 2. Speak. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good, actually. Okay, let's try this. All right, I'm Wally 2. Come here. Come here, Wally 2. Come here. It needs a little work. How about this one? Um, sit. He did it. Oh, what a good dog. Excellent work, Wally 2. Okay, so we have our pet patients. Hopefully everybody's got their pet patients ready. And now what we want to do is we want to go through something called a wellness exam. Now again, as a reminder, I'm not a veterinarian. So what I did is I did a little bit of research to learn a little bit about what a veterinarian does for a wellness exam. And this is actually something that you can do with any job that you might be interested in learning more about. So if you want to learn about a job, you can try looking up some information on the internet, or you can read a book, like we have these here in our vet clinic. You can read a book about what somebody with that job does, or if you have the chance, you can even talk to somebody who has that particular job job and learn a little bit about what their responsibilities might be. So this is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to take the research that I did and I'm going to work with all of you so that we can practice the skills of a veterinarian together on our animal patients here. All right, so now the first thing we actually need to do for our wellness exam is we're not going to walk right up to the animal right away. 
So just like you have to go to the doctor every year, our animal patients also need to go to the doctor every year. And sometimes, also just like you, they might be feeling a little bit nervous. And especially for animals like our dogs and cats, there's a lot of different animal sounds and smells, and they might be feeling a little bit scared. So if I'm the veterinarian, I don't want to walk right up to the dog. I'm going to start off by giving him a little bit of space. This also gives me a great opportunity to talk to the patient's owner to see if they have any concerns or ask them questions. And I can also just observe the animal from a distance to see how he moves, if he's having any difficulty walking. Um, I can see his behavior or how he interacts with other things. And then when it's time, I'm going to approach the animal slowly. I'm going to use a nice calm voice and I'm going to say, hi Wally too. How are you doing today? And I might reach out, give him a chance to approach me to see if he wants to come over and smell. And then when it's time to pet him, I'm going to pet him on this side because that way he can see me. I'm not coming up behind him where he might feel nervous, but I'm also not getting right up in his face. So just petting his side, letting him know, hi Wally too. Are you okay? Yeah, you're okay. Very good. So now that our patient has settled down, now it's time for me to move on to checking the animal's vital signs. So what a veterinarian is gonna do is they're gonna check the animal's temperature and weight. They're also gonna use a stethoscope so that they can listen to the animal's lungs as well as their heart. Now at home, you might not have all of those tools available and truth be told, my plush friend Wally too here doesn't actually have a heart rate. Don't tell him that. I don't um, so what we can do instead is we can practice checking our own heart rates. This is something you might have done before. There's a couple of different ways you can check your heart rate. So one is if you take two fingers and you put them on the inside of your opposite wrist. Now what you're trying to do is you're kind of putting them towards the outside of the wrist, underneath the thumb, between sort of the bone and cartilage. And then you push down just a little bit and you should feel a little bit of a pulse. And that's actually your heart rate um, and it's your, your, um, your heartbeat through that you can feel through your radial artery. Now, if you're having a tough time feeling it there, another place you can feel is right underneath your jawbone, and that's called your carotid artery. For some people, it's a little bit easier to feel there. But I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my wrist. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually count, and I'm gonna have you do the same thing at home. So have your fingers on your wrist or on your neck, under your jawline, and we're gonna count for 15 seconds. I'm gonna turn on my little timer here. Let's see, there we go. We're gonna count for 15 seconds and see how many times we feel our heartbeat in that time. Ready? And go. And stop, okay. So, for me, my heart beat 20 times during those 15 seconds. I must be a little excited. So if mine beat 20 times in 15 seconds, I wanna see how many times my heart beats per minute, which means I need to take the number I counted and multiply it by four to get to 60 seconds. So again, I counted 20 beats and I'm multiplying by four. What is 20 times four? It's 80. So I got 80 heartbeats in a minute. That's about what my heart rate is right now. Now I want you to do the same thing. So think about the number that you counted when we had our timer going. And then think about what is that number multiplied by four. Okay. Now my question for you is, is your heart rate faster or slower than 80 beats per minute? Now for a lot of you, not for everybody, but for a lot of you, your heart rate might be a little bit faster. Because generally speaking, when we're thinking about animals' body sizes, if we have something that's a little bit smaller, their heart rate is usually faster. And if we have an animal that's really big, generally speaking, their heart is a little bit slower. So sometimes kids' hearts beat a little bit faster than adults because their bodies are a little bit smaller. Now in the case of my, my animal patient here, in the case of Wally too, if my heart rate is, is 80 beats in a minute, do you think Wally 2's heart would beat faster or slower than mine? It would probably be a little bit faster, right? Because he's smaller than me. So dog's heart rates, depending on the size and the breed of the dog, a dog's heart rate 
might be between about 60 and 140 beats per minute when they're just resting. Now, if you have a really small animal patient at home, like a rabbit, a rabbit's heart beats between 120 and 150 beats a minute. If you have a really big animal patient at home, like a horse, a horse's heart only beats 32 to 36 times in a minute. Kind of cool. All right, so we are now going to move on to our final step of our wellness exam, and that is our head to toe exam. And this is when we take some time to really make sure we go through all of the dog's body so that we make sure that everything is healthy as it should be. And kind of like it sounds, we're going to start at the head. We're going to make sure that we look in the dog's eyes. We want to make sure that they're nice and clear. We're going to look in his nose and his nostrils to make sure that he isn't really stuffed up or have anything kind of draining out of his nose. Ew. We also need to look in our patient's mouth. And if your animal patient at home, if its mouth opens up, you can do this with me as, as well. But we want to look at the gums to make sure that there isn't any like lumps or bumps where there aren't supposed to be. We're going to look at the animal's teeth. And we actually want to make sure our animals are getting their teeth cleaned too. It sounds kind of silly, but we actually need to brush our dogs and cats' teeth every day, just like we do our own. We don't use the same toothpaste as we use on humans. We actually have special toothpaste that we make for dogs and cats, and it usually has really, really interesting flavors like chicken-flavored toothpaste. Does that sound kind of gross? I don't think I would want to brush my teeth with chicken flavored toothpaste, but dogs really, really love it. So once we've checked the mouth, we're also going to check the ears. This is really important because we might find something like parasites, like ear mites that need to be treated, or we might look for things like infection in the dog's ears. Now we're going to actually have to move on to the neck and the shoulders and even the armpits. We're going to do a little kind of squishing around in there because we want to feel for things like the nodes of the animal and some of the glands to make sure nothing is, is swollen or puffy in a way that it's not supposed to be, to make sure there aren't any lumps where there aren't supposed to be. And then we're also going to take this moment to look at the animal's coat and its skin because these are actually really important indicators of the animal's health too. So we want to make sure that the animal's coat is nice and smooth, that it doesn't have any big mats or anything like that, and that we have um, a nice glossy coat. The hair isn't really brittle. And then you can actually do this at home too if you sort of take your animal's fur and move it apart. This is what veterinarians do, uh, do so that they can look at the animal's skin because they want to make sure that the skin is nice and clean, that it's not really really oily or that it's not really really dry um, and if it is a lot of times this is because of whatever the animal may be eating so the veterinarian would talk to the um, to the the patient's owner to find out some more information and maybe make some recommendations. All right, and now we get to move on to the squishing portion of the animal exam. I'm sure veterinarians have a much fancier word, but from um, what we need to do is we need to check the, the bones and the muscles. So we're gonna do things like just gently squeeze the different joints of the animal, especially their legs. If we notice that the animal is, in, is um, in any pain, if they're uncomfortable, that's really important for veterinarians to know so they can take care of that. They can kind of squeeze around the different muscles to make sure there aren't any bumps where there aren't supposed to be. And then they're also gonna do a little bit of squishing in the animal's belly because they wanna check the abdomen so that they can actually feel some of the stuff inside like the uh, kidneys, and the liver and the intestines to make sure there aren't any bumps there that aren't supposed to be. And again, to check the dog to see if he's uncomfortable because if he is, that's a sign that we need to do something. So this is our wellness exam. And if at the end we need to do anything more, like if, for example, the animal needed to get any vaccinations or we had to take any samples from that pet, that's usually saved for the end because then the dog gets to go home or the patient gets to go home at that point. And we can talk a little bit more with the owner about any future uh, recommendations that we may have. So everybody, thank you so much for doing a little bit of role playing of a wellness exam here with me today. Now, if you want to continue to role play with your pet patient at home, there's other things that you might do because animals have other wants and needs besides um, their, their medicine, their veterinary care. So if you wanted to, for example, find out what sort of pretend food your pet might like to eat, that's something that you can role play with. If you have a toy brush at home, you might try um, 
taking care of your animal's coat, or you could even give them a little bit of a pretend bath, and this is taking good care of their, their um, fur and their skin like we talked about before. Or you can even try teaching your plush pet some new tricks. All right, Wally 2, are we ready for this one? I think we can do it. Here we go, three, two, one, fetch! We're going to keep working on that one, everybody. But you know what? Thank you very much for joining us here in the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Vet Clinic. We would love to hear from you all at home. We actually have in our vet clinic a whole bunch of pictures up on the wall of different pets. And these are actually the pets of our CMH family. We would love to see if you have any pets at home. If you want to post a picture of your pet in the comment, we would love to see some pictures. If you want to take a video of you working with your pet, maybe helping take care of them by brushing them or trying to teach them a new trick, that would be amazing. If you don't have a pet at home, you can take a picture of your plush pet that you used for your role play today, or maybe even draw a picture of a pet that you would like to have and share that with us. Thank you all so very, very much for joining us, and we hope to see you all again really soon. 